Hallelujah. Uh, welcome to our Sunday morning service uh, from wherever you are watching, whether you are from uh, St. Albans campus, uh, Digas Res campus or Tagum City in Philippines. Uh, we welcome you especially to this uh, our Sunday morning service. Uh, um, whether you are joining us through Facebook or uh, YouTube channel, uh, from which part, where, wherever you are, we welcome you specially, and uh, we love to um, uh, have, have you uh, in our service uh, this morning. Um, let's uh, look at our uh, uh, grow news. Um, uh, what's happening uh, this week? Um, so this week, the, the GROW groups are starting this week and the youth are starting on Friday as well. So GROW groups are starting on Tuesday. Uh, we are doing it via Zoom and the youth also starting on Friday and they are doing it via Zoom as well. And uh, next um, Sunday, uh, which is uh, 26th of July, uh, will be a, a special mission Sunday, and we'll have a special uh, guest speaker on that um, Sunday, uh, 26th of July. Uh, please join us uh, for a special mission Sunday. Uh, after that um, service, after that message, we will take a special offering uh, for mission uh, Sunday, and we will be uh, sending that money to the CRC mission uh, to support the mission work um, around the world. Um, after the service, uh, every Sunday, uh, you can join us um, uh, via Zoom uh, for the uh, for the catch-up. And a uh, lot many people are doing it. And if you're not doing it uh, so far, uh, just come in and um, uh, you can have a lot of good chat with the people. And also you can catch up with many people. Um, uh, the way That's the only way we can do it um, uh, during this uh, difficult time. Uh, and also the Grow Kids. The kids are um, also uh, um, uh, having a meeting after the church at 11.30 a.m. So this is happening every week and if you've got uh, primary school kids, uh, please um, uh, contact Mariel or contact office and they will let you know how to uh, join for that Grow Kids meeting. Um, uh, that's all the announcements uh, for this week um, and we are going to uh, enter into the time of uh, communion now and we've been uh, doing this for um, a few months now. Um, so wherever you are, uh, we trust that you have prepared your communion, you have a, a biscuit and a, a cup of Jews uh, to remember uh, what the Lord has done for us on the cross. Um, for this morning for the communion, I'm reading from um, uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 43, verse 1 to 2. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. We are living in a world where the current situation may feel like we are passing through sweeping rivers or blazing fire. None of us like that feeling. There is so much of anxiety, so much of pressure on everyone, not just the, in Australia, all around the world. In the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel, we can read about Daniel and his friends. Literally, they experienced the blazing fire when they disobeyed the king by refusing to bow in worship to King's uh, statue. The king got angry and he tossed them into a fire and had the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. But God was there with them. God walked them, walked with them through that difficult situation. In Daniel 3, 25, the king said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like son of God. Daniel and his friends, there were only three people, that, but king, so there was one more person there. And that's what he is expressing in Daniel 3.25. Jesus told us in Matthew 28.20, And surely I am with you always and to the very end of the age. 
the bible says you will never be alone god will always be there with you and for you the bible doesn't say if you pass through the waters it says when you pass through the waters this difficult time a lot of us feel like that we are passing through a sweeping water or we are passing through the burning fire but the bible give us the assurance as well as it give us the promise that god is with us you will have trouble as the bible says but jesus will always walk with walk through them with you that's the promise we have this morning i just wanted to read that um, the last part of isaiah uh, verse 2 when you pass through the waters i will be with you when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you when you walk through the fire you will not be burned the flames will not set uh, set you ablaze so these are the promises we got from uh, from our god and these are the words from the bible we just need to trust and we just need to believe that god is with us he already experienced we all have already ex- you would have already experienced if you have accepted christ as your personal savior and god sent his one and only son to die for us on the cross this morning when we are taking this communion we remember what god did for us on the cross this biscuit represent his body which was beaten for us on the cross let us take this biscuit thankfully thank you father for your sending your one and only son for us to die for us on the cross thank you jesus thank you jesus without you we don't have salvation thank you father let us eat thankfully this juice represent the new covenant in the blood of Christ which was shed for us on the cross heavenly father thank you for the salvation lord thank you for the cross lord thank you lord you have promised that that you will never leave us you will never forsake us lord lord we believe in you lord because we believe in your promise lord we believe in the um, the verse we read from Isaiah lord whatever the difficult situation we are going through that we believe that you are with us lord let us drink thankfully from the cup thank you father thank you jesus thank you thank you jesus for the cross thank you father for sending your one and only son without cross we don't have salvation without cross we don't have future thank you father thank you lord let us continue to worship maybe you are sitting down on a couch or or you are lying down somewhere maybe it's time to just stand up and raise hand doesn't matter whether we are worshiping worshiping from home or worshiping worshiping from anywhere um uh, god is still remain the same so let us um, give all the glory to him and let us continue to worship
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. circumstances. Our God is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. He will make your path straight. If you trust and believe in Him, He will make your path straight. And He's working on your behalf all the time. He's interceding for you before the Father God. Thank you, Jesus, that you're a faithful, faithful God. You are faithful to what you've promised, Lord God. And even when we let you down, you never let us down, Lord God. You are who you say you are, Lord God. And we trust you. We believe in you, Jesus. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You believe that today, God is working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never 
Hallelujah, Lord. Um, thank you, Father, uh, for the um, great worship we had this morning, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, for being with us, Lord. Uh, Lord, um, uh, Lord, uh, you have prepared our heart uh, to uh, receive the word for this morning, Lord. And thank you for our worship team, and thank you for their faithfulness, Lord, uh, for guiding us and leading us um, in this way, Lord. Uh, Lord, we surrender everything to you, Master. Have your way this morning, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to enter into uh, our um, uh, time of um, giving. Uh, we are going to uh, look at the verse for the tithes and offering this morning. I am reading from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. Because of the service by which you have approved yourself, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. This is, um, I have read from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verse 13. The Bible clearly uh, talks about the generosity. And we are so, so grateful and we are so thankful uh, for the Grow Church members uh, in all our um, three campuses uh, for their faithfulness, uh, for in giving the tithes and offerings and contributing to the building funds and, and even sowing into the missions field. Uh, we are so blessed to have um, our generous members. The Bible um, uh, clearly um, encourages uh, for us to uh, give gener generously um, uh, without holding back and then uh, that's what we are going to do this morning. Uh, before we do that, uh, let's uh, bow our head and pray and then there are many ways you can um, give on to uh, the kingdom of God um, um, uh, the, during this uh, time where we are not meeting uh, face to face. Uh, we encourage to give online. Uh, you will uh, see the uh, BSP and the account number on the screen uh, so you can uh, give it online and if you can't give it online if you want to find out other ways to give, please contact the church office and we will let you know what other ways you can um, uh, give unto the kingdom of God. Uh, let's bow our head and pray. Um, Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you, uh, Lord, that uh, you have given us an opportunity again to sow into your kingdom, Lord. Uh, we bring our tithes and offerings, uh, which, is, um, which is coming through... Um, online giving this uh, this uh, this morning lord the people who have already given uh, people about to give lord we we bless them lord uh, we bless them for their generosities lord uh, lord lord, uh, lord uh, keep them safe lord uh, during this uh, uh, difficulty lord and lord um, give them uh, provide their needs lord and then you will give everyone enough job and you will keep them safe lord you will fill them with their uh, wisdom lord so that we can um, we can uh, sow it back into your kingdom lord we surrender everything to Master, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, uh, we were privileged uh, to, um, it's my privilege to invite uh, Pastor Chris to the platform. Um, uh, pastor Chris Colley, our senior pastor, will be bringing uh, the word for this morning. So let's, um, let's um, focus and let's um, start listening to him. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that we've been able to worship you uh, in this way, Lord. We just enjoy to stand on our feet, Lord, and to declare, Lord, that you are our risen Christ. You're our Lord and our Saviour. And Father, as we open your word today, we just pray that you speak into each of our hearts. Lord, we'll let you have your way and minister to each of us in, one, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. 
Well, I want to share with you uh, uh, this morning about being faithful in the family, being faithful in the family of God. Our theme for the year is about being faithful, and I want to speak about being faithful in the family. So what is it actually to be like to be faithful in the family of God and, and, and to, to be someone that, that is uh, modelling that and as, as believers, we want to be uh, people that are faithful. Well, we talked about being faithful friends a couple of weeks ago. Well, I want to talk about being faithful in the family. What actually does that look like in a godly, in a biblical way? Now, before I talk a little bit about the, 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 the church family, I want to talk a little bit broader just for a moment, just to mention our natural family. And our natural family, of course, is obviously very important to us. Now, some people, they may have had bad experiences in their extended families or families may because they're not believers, they don't really understand and, and there may be some conflict or persecution, all sorts of things may happen in those settings. And, and there's some people that feel that, well, the church, you know, this is my real family. Well, well, it is, but also I just encourage us not to neglect our natural families as well. In fact, Jesus actually is, requires that of us. If we really want to be faithful believers, faithful Christians, and, and faithful in the household of God, faithful in the family of God, that we also need to be faithful in terms of our natural family. And Jesus said this in Matthew 7, and t- verses, uh, Matthew 7, verses 10 to 12. And this was a rebuke that he was giving to the Pharisees. He said, for Moses says, honour your father and your mother and anyone who curses their father or mother is to put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corban, that is devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Basically what he was saying is the Pharisees had this thing and saying, look, if you, rather than helping your family or supporting your family, you, you doing things in, in God's name or doing those things for God, then what they, the help they would have got is actually their gift to God. And Jesus is saying, no, that's not how it works. You still need to honour your father and mother. We need to do that. We still need to honour and bless our natural families. We're talking about our spiritual family today, but we still have to honour our natural families. In fact, in, Paul said it in 1 Timothy 5 verse 4, and then jumping down to verse 8, he said, But if a widow has children or grandchildren, these should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents. For this is pleasing to God. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. They're very, very strong words. So when we're talking about our spiritual family, our our church family, remember we still have a responsibility uh, to our natural family. And one of the things about becoming a believer, the beautiful thing about becoming a believer, giving our life to Christ, is that we become a part of God's family, God's eternal family. And uh, that happens when we give our life to Jesus Christ. When we give our life to Jesus Christ and we become children of the living God. Nothing more wonderful, nothing better than to be a child of the living God. In John 1.12 it says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. What a wonderful gift it is. When you give your life to Christ, you become a child of the living God. What a wonderful and precious gift that is. You become a part of God's family. And as a part of God's family, it talk, tells us in Hebrews 2.11 about how Jesus responds to us. It says, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. That's an amazing thing. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. When we give our heart to Jesus Christ, we become part of the family of God. We we are connected to God. We become his children. And Jesus, as it says, not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. What a wonderful, wonderful thing it is when you give your life to Jesus Christ and you become a part of God's family. If you haven't done that, I encourage you to do that. Become a part of God's family. Become his child. Do that. Do that even this day. And of course, once we are a believer, 
We actually have brothers and sisters that are all over the world. Every Bible-believing Christian that's born again, that loves the Lord Jesus Christ, to honours Him, who knows that salvation is only found in Jesus Christ, that we are connected with them right across the world with our brothers and sisters. And special uh, hello to all our family in the Philippines, Tagum City, and I know others there. We pray that God blesses you. But we're a part of the wider church family. And then 3 John uh, chapter 1 and verse 5, uh, John writes, Dear friend, you were faithful in what you were doing for the brothers and sisters, even though they are strangers to you. And so even though they may be strangers, even though you might not met them, you don't really know them, or if you meet someone, they're a Christian, they may be a stranger, but they're brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful gift it is, is that not only when we become born again, are we children of the living God, that we have at peace with God through Jesus Christ, but we have brothers and sisters all around the world. What a wonderful gift that is. And so we're never alone. We've got a really big family. And even if you were an only child or, or, or even an orphan, or maybe you've lost all your family, you're a part of something big, something incredibly big, the part of the whole wider church family. And what a blessing and gift that is. But what I really want to focus on today is more our local church family, the family that God has placed us in. And we'll talk a little bit about that, about being faithful in that family that we're in. And, and, and the Bible makes it very clear that there was local churches. There's one thing to be part of the, of the wider church, but we do need to be a part of a local church. We need to be grounded in, bedded in, rooted in, planted into a new, uh, into our own local church family. We need to belong to a church family. In Acts 14, 23, it says, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. And so they went around and they were establishing um, uh, elders in different local churches. And so, yes, this is the church, the body of Christ, but there are local churches. And can I encourage you that you need to be a part of a local church? Uh, anyone who says, oh, I just go here, there, everywhere, we're all brothers and sisters. And that's true, we are brothers and sisters. But God has designed it that we are in to be a local family together in a local church setting. You need to have your own church home with your own church family. It's very, very important that you do that. Because if you don't do that and you're one of these little butterflies that flit around from church to church and this, a bit of this, a bit of that, can I tell you, you won't grow unless you get your roots down. In a local church family, you're not going to really grow. You're not going to be challenged. You're not going to use your gifts. Uh, you will not grow unless you're a part of a local church family. It's so important that we're a part of them. And so being part of a local church family, we want to be people that are faithful in the family of God. We're faithful in the family, faithful in God's family, the local family, the church where God has put us in. And so I want to really look at what actually does it look like to be a faithful part of your local church what, what does that look like? It's interesting when you have a look at the book of Hebrews in chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And here, this little passage here is contrasting uh, the ministry of Moses and the ministry of Jesus. And, and really the passage is talking about how the uh, ministry of Jesus is far superior uh, to the ministry of Moses. And of course, it's written to Hebrews and helping them understand that, yes, Moses was great. You know, Moses had the Ten Commandments and he's given the law and all the wonderful things that came through Moses. But how much greater is our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who was to come and the one who is, of course, coming back again. But it says in Hebrews 3, verses 5 and 6, Moses was faithful as a steward in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the Son over God's house, and we are His house if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and hope in which we glory. And so it talks about Moses. He was a faithful one. He was a faithful son in the house. That is saying that Jesus is superior because he's faithful over the house. And of course, of every local church, Jesus Christ, he is the leader. He is the Lord. He is the one that is in charge of every church. We are a part of his extended body, which Christ is the head. And of every local church, Jesus Christ, he is the head of every church. and uh, But we want to be faithful like Moses. So Jesus is the one over the house. But we want to be faithful like Moses was faithful in the house. He was a faithful servant in all of God's house. And the early verses say he was faithful in all the house. And so we want to be people that are faithful 
in the family, faithful in the household of God. And so three things I want to quickly look at when we talk about being faithful in the family, faithful in the family that God has placed us in. And remember that the church that you're in, God has placed you there. He strategically placed you there for such a time as this. God has put you there. He chose you, could put you anywhere, but he put you in the church that you're in. Now, there are some circumstances in which we might move away from a church and I maybe mention that a little bit later. But remember that if you're not locally planted in a church, you will not grow. So one of the things to be faithful in the house of God is to understand the power of together. Now, together is a powerful word. And, and, and if you're just flitting around, you're never going to have that together. You're just going to be moving around. But there's the power of together. It's a very powerful word, together. And, uh, and, and it says in Ephesians 2.22, In him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So God actually builds you together. Now, you are joined with every believer across the face of the earth and also across time who profess Jesus Christ to honour him and lift up his name and the authority and the integrity of the word of God. But there's something about being built together in a local church. And as you're built together, that's where we start to grow. And it's interesting because the focus during this time of lockdown, and again, we're in Victoria, we're still back in lockdown once again, and for an extended period of time, that, that really the, the importance of togetherness has really become amplified. It's helped us realise that the church isn't the building. It's not about the building. It's about people who are joined together. And there is that sense of being together. And to be a faithful person in the house of God, a faithful son and a daughter in the house of God, is to understand that we are together, that God has brought us together. That's what makes the church. It's the people in the church. It's not the building. It's not the facilities. Whether you're meeting under a tree or whether you're meeting in a, in a building, it doesn't matter. It's the people that are the church and make, make the church. And so we understand the power of together, that we want to be together, stand together and work together. And there's a challenge in Hebrews 10.25 and it says this, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, not giving up meeting together. Now, at a time where you're not allowed to necessarily hear, certainly in Victoria, we're not allowed to be congregating in any way, but the heart of that is meeting together. And I'm so encouraged, I'm really encouraged by so many in the church family say, look, I'm really looking forward to when we can come back together again. And, and, I, and I wanna be back together with everyone. And we're just missing everyone so much. And we are, we're missing you all so much. We are so longing that we can all be back to together again. Some people have said, oh, what happens, you know, when, when it's all over? What if people don't go to church and they just wanna sit home and, and watch church? I don't think people will do that. I think people who really understand what it is to be a faithful person, a faithful part of the household of God, they understand the importance of being together and they won't forsake meeting together. That will be a priority and will always remain a priority and that, that heart for one another is so important that, that we're gonna to be together, encouraging one another all the more as the day comes. And so that heart of being together, someone who's faithful in the household, wants to be together, wants to be there. I want to be a part of it. I want to be with you. I want to be with my brothers and sisters. It's that heart of being together. And certainly we're stronger together. The way that we can support one another, encourage one another. If you're going through a hard time and you're doing that on your own, it's extremely difficult. But if you're in, with brothers and sisters, we can together we can encourage and build one another up. And we can do that. We can call one another. I encourage you, if you haven't rung someone, make sure you ring people. Be ringing people within the church family. I know many of you are. Probably most everybody is. And I encourage you. But if you haven't done that, get on the phone and ring up and encourage someone. I was really encouraged. Uh, Sister Doris got on the phone and just said, I just wanted to bless you and see how you were going. So encouraging to me for someone to do that. How encouraging it is when someone gets on the phone and just says, how are you doing? So I can, let's do that. Let's keep doing that together. Even at a time when we can't physically be together, we can still be connected together. And even by Zoom or whatever the technology we use, we can do that. Another thing about the power of being together is, is that we stick together, we stand together and, and we grow together. And my encouragement is make sure that you stay planted. Stay planted in the family that God has put you in if you really want to grow. 
stay planted. And, and it's nothing, you get a plant and you put it down and then you rip it up and put it in. And I've seen people that go from one church to another church to another church to another church and they never really put their roots down and then, then they never really grow. They have stunted growth, if at all. And so if you really want to grow, you need to put your roots down. And what will make you grow is you'll find that when you're in a church long enough, you realise, hang on, not, these people aren't all as perfect as I thought they were. But then you realise you're not so perfect either. And what happens is that we learn and grow together. We learn what grace is. We learn what forgiveness is. We learn what it is to, 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 to try and to do our best sometimes to fail. We learn a whole lot about ourselves. We learn a lot about each other, but more importantly, we learn a lot about the Lord as we grow together. Stay planted together. Now, some people, they get married and they get move off, they get their job, they go somewhere else, but stay there. Don't just get up. If you feel restless within yourself, that's not a time just to get up and move if you're feeling restless or if you're having an issue. Time and time again, I've seen people that, that have gone and because and, and there's an issue deep with inside themselves that they haven't really resolved. And they may become close to resolving that, but then, no, I don't want to, and I'll go somewhere else. And they start all over again. It's really sad to see that as a pastor when you see that. And the worst thing is when you see people take their children, root their children out, and then they, oh, no, I'm going, I'm going to put them over there. But I've seen so many times, by far the majority of times, when families root their children up and... Do, how many children get lost along the way. And that grieves me as a pastor to see that. Stay rooted, stay in the family that God has put you in, that we can grow together. It's so important that we do that. Talks about in Colossians 2.9, that says, the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God calls it to grow. We're called Grow Church because we want you to grow. But there's something about being together, about the supporting ligaments as we all hold and work together that we see growth in ourselves, but we see growth in one another. We see growth in the kingdom of God. And of course, Part of being together is, is, is contributing to that as a part of your family. And I'm so blessed by the number of people in this church, in Grow Church, who serve so selflessly, make so many sacrifices for other people. Even now, there's people right now <laughs> that are here and you're sitting there at home. There's people here that, that, that are faithfully serving and sacrificing. And I praise God for the heart of the people. Uh, I praise God that, that they realise that we're all in this together. And so they want to contribute. They want to do something that this isn't just for oh, someone else. Oh, no one else can do it. I'm so thrilled and blessed by the people in the church who say, no, look, I can do that. I want to jump in. What can I do to help? Where can I serve? How can I help? That warms my heart. I'm so blessed by that. People like that are faithful. They're faithful in the family and, when, and giving. And I praise God for the generous hearts of the people in this church family because they're faithful. They give. They don't just say, give God a little tip. They're generous in their giving, generous in their serving, generous in their giving. And I praise God for that. People like that are faithful in the house. They understand the power of together. We need to be together. We need to stand together. And then we also need to work together. We need to contribute to see God's purposes come about. And so I praise God for those that understand the power of being together. If you want to be faithful in the household of God, learn the lesson of being power, of the power of together. Not forsaking meeting together. Now I'm going to come together. I'm going to stick together. I'm going to impart into other people. I'm going to contribute. I'm going to hold, hold the whole thing together. I'm going to get my roots down deep. I'm going to plant myself because then will I grow. And I'm so thrilled when I see those who plant themselves and just to see the growth in them, to see their children, seeing wonderful things happening because they plant themselves and there's a wonderful blessing in that. So the first thing about being faithful in the house is understanding the power of together. And the second thing I want to say is that if you want to be faithful in the family, faithful in the household of God, is to understand the priority of one another that one another are actually very important, the priority of one another. Again, if you look in the scripture, you did a word study on together, very powerful about talking about us being together. And then you could do another one about one another because the scripture is full of references to one another, about forgiving with one another, bearing with one another, loving one another, helping one another, bearing one another's burdens, the power of, and the priority of one another. And it's so important that we love your church family. Love your church family. And, and that doesn't mean you necessarily love all the programs, you love all the buildings, you love this, oh, I don't like my chair, I don't like this. 
It's not about that. Love the family, love the people. Because at the end of the day, the, the, the church is people. It's not the building, it's the people. Love one another, the priority of one another. In Romans 12 verse 10, it says this, Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. That, that's what it actually means to be a, a, a part of the family in that way, to be faithful, that you have that heart. Be devoted to one another in love. And to be devoted, it, it's a strong word, being devoted. If something that you're devoted to, it takes your time, takes your attention, it takes your affection. If you're devoted to something, it is something that is actually a very high priority on the list of priorities. And it tells us to be devoted to one another in love. And someone that is faithful in the family, which we all wanna be, we wanna be like that. We wanna be faithful in the family, someone who is devoted to one another. And so we realise that church isn't about us. It's not about whether oh, I don't like the coffee or I don't like the music or all this. So it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about one another. And our mindset is directed towards one another. How can I help other people? What can I do to encourage them in their, in their walk with the Lord? What can I do to bless them? How can I show love and grace with them? And so the priority of one another is so really important that we want to bless one another, devoted to one another and forgiving one another. As Pastor Lewis spoke a great word about forgiveness. And part of that is we need to forgive one another and, and to have that gracious heart above, above all things. 1 Peter 3, 8, it says this. Finally, all of you, that's you, finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. And that's the kind of person that is faithful in the families. Moses was a faithful son in the house. If you want to be a faithful son in the house, have that. Have, be like-minded. Be sympathetic. If someone's going through something, they're hurting, then your heart is for them. Not, oh, you poor dear, off you go. No, no, you mean that. Your heart is there. You'll stand with them. You'll pray for them. Uh, loving one another. Be compassionate. You know, we're all going to muck up sometime. And when someone mucks up, you don't run in there with a baseball bat. No, no, you're compassionate to them. You, you, you're loving and you're gentle. And you're humble. You're not trying to make yourself look good. You're actually trying to encourage people, help them to stand up a little bit taller. So that's the heart of the priority of one another. If you want to be faithful, a faithful in the family, faithful follower of Jesus Christ, faithful in the household of God, faithful in the family, then yes, know the power of together. We need one another. There's a power together and the priority of one another, caring for one another. And so if you haven't already done so, how have you supported someone during this time? Again, it's been a difficult period of time and, and it looks like there's gonna be a little bit longer for us here, certainly here in Victoria and Melbourne here. And so well, what have you done to support someone? I was so blessed when I had a, a pastor um, ring me up for, for, from a, a, a regional church and, and, I, and, uh, and I was so grateful uh, Pastor Phil Baker rang up and, and he just said, look, I just want to, want to bless your church. Uh, just let you know, we're standing with you, praying for you. We're not in the lockdown area, but it must be hard. And that was so encouraging to me to have that pastor ring and just to say, look, 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 we're standing with you in the midst of all of that. And, and, and I encourage you to do that. If you haven't encouraged someone during this time, make it your mission. Who can I ring? Who can I encourage? Who can I thank? Who can I bless? Who can I do something with? You, might, you can't just necessarily drop in around on people. We know we're not allowed to do that at the moment during this lockdown time. But we can jump on the phone. We can encourage. We can talk to someone. And so do that. Bless someone. Uh, love one another. That's a part of being a faithful part of the household of God. And the other thing finally I want to talk about is that, that, that if you really want to be faithful as a servant in all God's house, faithful in the family of God, faithful in this church family, then need to understand the joy of being united in purpose. That God has given us a purpose. We're here together. We're not here just to play church. And, and that's why it'd be wrong for us just to be ones who just saw from now on, I'm just going to sit home and, and watch church all the time. And because and, and, you're not actually giving of yourself, you're not contributing anything but you're not actually fulfilling the purpose that God has for you or even for even contributing to the, the purpose that we have together as a local church. Certainly we want to grow. We're here to grow. 
The reason why we want to grow, we want to grow spiritually, we want to grow in maturity, we want to grow in character, we want to grow in the things of God is that, that we want to see that shared with the world that needs the love of God. They need to know the love of Jesus Christ. And so it's not about us that we have a purpose. And ultimately that purpose is to see people come into, <coughs> excuse me, fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says in Philippians uh, chapter 2 and in verse 2, he says, Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. And so it's important if you want to be faithful in the, in the, in the house, faithful in the family of God, then you need to grab a hold of the vision and the purpose, the direction of the church, and it needs to burn in your own heart. And, and I praise God, one of the many things that, that is a church that grabs us is our heart for missions. And I'm so excited the way I see that that has really grabbed a hold of people. They're passionate about that because ultimately missions is about people coming into the kingdom of God. And, and, and I'm so excited the way that people really sow themselves into things. But we need to grab a hold of the purpose. We need to know what we're here for. We need to know what we're on about. And ultimately, we want to see people Growing in God, but as we grow in God, we want to be able to touch the lives of others that they may come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to help people come to know Him. And so my encouragement to us today is that we want to be faithful members, faithful part, faithful uh, elements, people within the family of God. We want to be faithful and we want to be faithful in the family that God has placed us in. And so I encourage you to do that. Do you understand the power of together? It's not a take it or leave it. We're all in. We're being built together. We're being joined together. So we can't have some bits that are, no, no, we're all in it together. Our heart is together. We stand together. We stick together. We grow together. We learn together. We contribute, each and every one of us, into the house of God. We, God, we understand the priority of one another, how important it is to love and to care and to, to just look after one another. Do that. Be someone who has such a heart for the people of God. You know, they're not just a bunch of strangers that you can just dump at any time. No, no they, these are your family. Love them, care for them. And they're not perfect, but guess what? Neither are you and neither am I. But we love one another. The scripture tells us is love covers a multitude of sins. We're very forgiving and gracious people that are on a journey together. And we want to see Jesus' name lifted up. And we want to see people coming into his kingdom and understand the joy of being united in purpose because the destiny that God has for your life, it's not necessarily found in isolation. It's actually found together. As you reach your potential, as you grow in God to be everything God has called you to be, then that helps pro we get propelled towards our corporate or collective destiny as a church family because we're all in this together. As you grow in God and as you begin to reach your potential, then we all start to reach our potential. We all lift and rise up where we all are because we're all in this together. Remember, the church is you. You're the church. The church is in the building. It's us. And so our heart is, is that we are joined together in purpose to see the name of Jesus Christ lifted up and exalted. So can I encourage you to, to love your church family? Love your church family. Love your church doesn't mean you come and you love the coffee. Maybe you love the coffee. They serve great coffee for those that are really into coffee. But you're not getting your coffees right now, you, unless you're making one now. You shouldn't be. You should be listening. But it's not about the things. It's about the people. And it's about you being a, a valued part of the family. You belong to that. Scripture talks about us belonging to one another. I belong to you. You belong to me. We belong to each other. We are family together. And it's such a wonderful, precious gift to have a local church family, honour your church family, love your church family, support your church family, pray for your church family, because I tell you, we need it. We all need prayer. Lift up your church family, encourage one another, bless one another, support one another, love the family that God has given you. And, I, and, I, and I'm so grateful that God has placed me in this wonderful church family here at Grow Church. I praise God for each and every one of you. Thank you for your love and your kindness, your sacrificing hearts and such a joy to, to, to be a part of this wonderful family. Thank you for accepting me into your family and allowing me to be a part of the, your families. But I pray that God blesses you. And if anyone is watching this, if, if you're not a part of the household of faith, you, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not a part of God's family yet. 
then I encourage you, can you just give your life to Jesus Christ, ask Him to forgive you for the sin, all the stuff that you've done that's offended God and it's hurt others, it's even hurt yourself. Ask the Lord to forgive you for that. Ask Him to take away your sin and by His death on the cross, when His blood was shed, let that wash away that sin and accept the life that you have, His promise of eternal life as you exchange your junk for His holiness, if you acknowledge Him as your Lord and Saviour, the one who takes your sin, who rose from the dead and when He died on the cross, He then rose from the dead, giving you the promise of eternal life. Become His child today. And if, and if you are a child of God, then and your brothers and sisters, wherever you're watching this, you may be in a far and distant place. Well, I'm your brother you, or, and you're my sister or brother in a distant place. We are joined together because of Jesus Christ. And we can fellowship openly, lovingly, freely with our brothers and sisters across time and across earth, across wherever you might even be in, in this world. But the precious gift of your local church, honour your local church, love your local church family, bless them. And, and But above all, if you don't know Jesus Christ, then come to know Him even this day. Let me pray. Father, I just thank You, Lord, for the wonderful gift of a local church family, Lord, that You place us in a family. And so, Father, I just thank You, Lord, for this family, Lord, for Grow Church, Lord, here in St Albans, Lord, and here in Diggers Rest and also in Tagum City, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that we're a part of that. I thank you, Lord, we're a part of a wider church family, Lord, our CRC denomination, Lord. We're a part of the family of believers right across the face of the earth who lift up and proclaim uh, the name of Jesus Christ and rely on the authority uh, of the Word of God, Lord. I thank you, Lord, we're all connected to them. My Father, I thank you. Lord, that we're a part of your eternal family because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, paying the penalty for our sin, that we don't have to deal with that, Lord, but we can have his righteousness. And Lord, have the joy of being a part of your eternal family, Lord, to be with you forever, to be children of the living God. Father, I thank you so much. Thank you for our local church, Lord. What a wonderful church this is. Lord, bless each and every one. Lord, we so desperately want to be able to meet together. But Lord, continue to let our hearts be bound to knit together. Lord, as we love one another, care for one another, Lord, pray for one another. And again, Father, for anyone who doesn't know you, Lord, let them this day surrender their life to Jesus Christ, Lord, that they can become a part of God's family, part of your family, to become our brothers and sisters, Lord. And if they uh, had not want our church home, Lord, that they can even become a part of this family here. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the gift of life that you've given us in Jesus Christ and the wonderful, precious gift of our local church family, our family, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Praise God.
Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Chris, for that uh, beautiful message. Um, we're going to close our morning service. Um, um, after the service, uh, there is an opportunity for everyone to join in via Zoom to catch up. And that's a great opportunity to see the uh, other uh, other members. Uh, if you have not been part of it, just come along, um, uh, connect via Zoom. Uh, we have a lot of a uh, uh, lot of good chat after the uh, church, uh, church every Sunday, and we love to see you all there. And also f- um, for the kids, remember that the meeting start at 11:30 a.m. Uh, via Zoom as well. Uh, let's uh, bow our head and uh, let's pray, and let's uh, conclude this service uh, with prayer. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, Thank you uh, for this Sunday morning service, Lord. And thank you for being with us, Lord. And thank you for giving us this opportunity um, uh, to uh, to, uh, to connect via... Um, Facebook or a YouTube channel, Lord, to to look at, to 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 partake in this service, Lord. Um, Lord, thank you for keeping all of us safe, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, give us wisdom to do the to the right thing, Lord, and uh, and keep us safe um, uh, until we um, see each other again, Lord. Uh, we surrender everything to you, Master. We ask it in Jesus' name, Amen. Have a, a good afternoon.